You know, some of you said I wouldn't come back, and even a few of you said I couldn't come back, but I, here I am, I'm back. So, uh, welcome everybody to another Blender tutorial. The King has returned, and uh, today we're making candy canes, but you know, we're, we're, you, you know me. I'm not just gonna be like, oh, let's make candy canes, yeah. We're gonna make it procedurally with math, so check it out. We can control the radius of it. We can control the length of it, and the spiral material is a function of the length of it. We can also control the color of the candy cane, the trim of the candy cane. You know how it is. Completely procedural geometry nodes. Boys, let's hop in. Probably should have saved that, but anyways. Uh, geometry nodes. We're going to take our cube and make it a geonodes group, delete the group input, and our goal is to make a candy cane using no curves that we make, using just nodes, okay? So if we think about what a candy cane is, is it's kind of the circular shape and then a line. So we need to make the circular shape and then a line, specifically a hemisphere, but two-dimensionally, so, so an arc. <laughs> uh, either way, either way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a mesh circle. If this doesn't make sense, well, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I kind of just outlined how it would make sense. Either way, we're gonna take a mesh circle and we wanna cut off the bottom half, right? If we cut off the bottom half, we're left with an arc. Okay, so let's take this and delete geometry. What geometry are we deleting? everything on the uh, either top or bottom half. Now, I've been struggling. I keep trying to click the selection and it just doesn't do it like the way I want it to, but whatever. So uh, for what we're gonna delete, I'm gonna say the rule for what is gonna be deleted is anything that the position of the Y coordinate, so we could either do it as an X coordinate left and right or Y coordinate up and bottom, top and bottom, which would you rather be? Uh, we're going to do it as a function of the uh, Y coordinate. So we're going to say, hey, delete geometry. Only do what you do if the position of the Y is, and this is where we're going to add our little if statement, is greater than, or actually I guess we could do less than zero. Okay? And you could, uh, you could add a bit more geometry. You, you can see how it's kind of hovering over here. That's because anything that gets even close to zero gets cut off. Long story short, we're gonna say delete geometry for anything where the Y coordinate is less than zero, anything down here, okay? Uh, to make sure that this doesn't get cut off, you can make this just a tiny bit, I guess, negative, negative 0.02. We can just try sliding it around, something like that. Doesn't need to be precise. Uh, the more vertices we add, the closer this is going to be. So I'm thinking negative 0.01. That looks pretty good. That looks like an arc. And is there probably a cleaner way to do this? Yes, but whatever. So we have the arc part of the candy cane. Do we have the leg part of the candy cane? The thing that's going to be on the ground as you're walking with this candy stick. By the way, the reason my mouse keeps drifting to the corner is I'm just using my mouse on the laptop like a fucking muggle. Okay? Yeah, you heard me. I, I said muggle. Um... We were talking about something, right? Yes, the length of the thing. How do we do that? Well, it's just a line, so let's just add in a line. And we're going to combine the two. Don't worry about it. So we're going to join this uh, circle, this deleted arc circle, with a mesh line. The line needs to start over here and go downwards, okay? So the question is, how do we do that? Well, we can have the start location of it be over here, which happens to be a negative 0.5 on the x-axis, but if I change the radius, it keeps changing where it is. So the location of the start is a function. It depends on the radius. So because of that, I'm going to make this a parameter, and I'm going to try to click this. I'm going to use all my willpower. There we go. I'm going to do a... Can I just type in divide nowadays? I guess I can. We are going to divide or actually, I guess we could just multiply by negative one because it's the radius from the center going this way. Let's try that. So we're gonna take the radius multiplied by negative one and I wanna say, have the start location, have that be the X coordinate. So let's see, we put that there, set that to zero and shove this on the Y axis. There we go. So let's see what we have so far. We have our, well our arc doesn't exist when the radius is zero. So let's make that bigger. And we have this line <laughs> that's going in the wrong direction. Uh, so let's just flip that. And uh, this, by the way, is something we can also expose as a parameter. So long story short, uh, I have a line segment that starts here. Again, it's taking the radius 
negative 1, so on the x, negative, you, you, you understand. And then it goes, it branches with an offset of a negative number uh, in that direction. Uh, do I want to be able to control this procedurally? No, but we'll do it anyways. So we're going to make this a little parameter, a little parameter that I cannot click. I can never click it. I try so hard. And uh, now we have uh, both pieces, but don't be fooled. Even though we uh, join geometry, uh, these aren't connected pieces. And there's just one and then the other, and there's actually two vertices right here. So we actually want to combine those so we can make it into a single curve. How do we combine those? Merge by distance. We're going to merge any two vertices that are within a very tiny threshold of each other. In fact, just to be safe, I'm going to do 0.01. This is going to combine any vertices that are within a small distance of each other, uh, which these two satisfy. They're going to overlap. If you make this high, it's going to make this thing kind of low resolution. Okay? So merge by distance. Cool. Uh, now we tab this shape that's composed of two meshes, and then we merged it. Uh, I want to turn it into a curve so we can do all the nice curvy stuff with it. So again, I know the, the mouse is sliding to the side, kind of like a Thomas chasing Jerry. Uh, I'm going to take this mesh and convert it into a curve. What this is going to let us do is add thickness to it. We almost want a circle that sweeps along this. And that's easiest to do when this is a curve. So we mesh to curve, and then we curve to mesh. It might seem like this is coming out of nowhere, but this is a tried and true method. Okay? We're going to take our curved circle. We're going to combine it. And look at that. Look at that. It's nice. And we can control the radius of this. By the way, I just want to highlight, if we did not merge by distance, you'll see this tiny little gap right here. That's because these vertices aren't connected. Merge by distance fixes that issue. And uh, you could also fill the caps so that, you know, there's endpoints there. Um, so what do we have so far? I just want to emphasize this. The radius we can control and the uh, leg will stick onto it. And we can also control the length of the leg. And you can do this with a multiplication by negative 1. I'm just going to keep it as a negative number. Okay? So just kind of pick numbers that kind of look like a candy cane. Next order of business is let's give this a striped material, which isn't the simplest thing in the world because it's not just like a wave texture because it needs to spiral as it goes up it. Uh, so that, that, that's what we're going to do. So let me show you what's up. I'm going to use a set material. We want to apply a material to all of this called material. By the way, probably a good time to save this. I'm going to call it available on Patreon. That's right. Patrons get this for, I mean, not for free. I mean, they pay to be a patron, but they get this with their patronage. Link in the description. Um, okay. Now that we got that ad out of the way, uh, we want to make a material. Material. So let's go to the shader editor. Uh, because I'm using a laptop, I have to type in frame all just to see this. Um, so the issue is, so here we have a material, I'm going to call it cane, I'm going to, okay, maybe I'll rename it here, I'll call it cane, and then we have the material selected. I want the cane material, and you might think, okay, we want stripes, so something like a wave texture. If we go to rendered view, you're going to see that it's kind of sort of the right thing, but no matter if we set this to X, Y, or diagonal, Diagonal gets kind of close, but it, none of these spiral up the thing. So we need the wave texture to be a function of this cane sweeping around. And honestly, this would be super easy to do. Shut up, car. Uh, this would be super easy to do if this was all a straight line, but it's bent. So how do we do this? Here's the idea. Remember that everything we have here is a curve. Well, once we mesh to curved it. In other words, I can say what part of the curve we're on by using something like the spline parameter or the factor. Uh, let me show you what I mean. I think it should still be, unless it's been renamed recently, I'm still using an older version, 3.2. But the spline parameter has a factor, and that factor tells us from 0 to 1 where we are on the curve. This can be used as a mapping. And in fact, we might even be able to circumvent this. So we have this curve and also the, uh, the uh, curved circle. Uh, what the curved circle does is it's the thing that's sweeping along the thing. We have a circle sweeping along this. What I'm thinking is I think we might be able to circumvent this in a fancy way. Let's try it. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to capture attribute. I want to say save an attribute from this curved circle, right? this uh, circle right here, and I want to say, uh, where are we along this curve? And just follow me here. I think it's going to work. 
I don't know if this is how I originally did it. Uh, we're going to take the factor. So now we're saying capture uh, where we are along this circle, which again is sweeped along the entire thing. I'm going to take that attribute. I'm going to save it by trying my hardest. Why is it so hard? Do I need to like go a bit to the side? Oh, I had it. And then I let go. There we go. Uh, we have an attribute, we got to give it a name, I'm going to call it mapping, since that's what it's going to do, and what I'm hoping is that this is going to help us. So we're going to bring in this attribute, again, make sure these names match, so I called it mapping, I'm going to call it mapping here as well. And if we look at the color, you can see it's this 0 to 1 gradient that goes circularly, right, we wrap around. What I'm thinking is we use this as a texture coordinate system for the wave texture. And all of a sudden, it looks like these lines, minus the endpoints, which, you know, they're messy. You could always disable fill caps to make it clean. Um, but that's its own problem. Uh, you can see this wave texture actually wraps around this. More than that, uh, we can control the amount and all this. Uh, but it's still not correct. I think uh, most candy canes, unless they're lazy, uh, they have this wave texture kind of spiral as it goes along it. So in the end, we do need this to kind of be a function of our like candy cane curve. So how do we get this to rotate? Well, we could do something with the texture coordinates, or why don't we just take the curve and rotate it? Remember, there's a parameter called tilt, and we can set the curve tilt so that when we increase this, you can see it's almost like an animated, you know, basically what's happening is this curve, this candy cane curve, is spiraling and the, our mapping is attached to that. So it looks like it's kind of doing this wave thing. Either way, I want to tilt this, not by the same number everywhere. Why is it so hard? I want to tilt it uh, by the spline parameter. So it's good that we have this node. Now this parameter is going to be referring to uh, our other curve, not the circle, because it's in a different context. I'm going to connect the factor and it's subtle. You might not be able to see it, but we take this, we multiply it to make it kind of more of an intense effect. And now you can see we get a spiraling. Why does this work? It works because this curve is, you know, spinning or tilting as we go along it. It's a, f a function of the factor. And we're saying spin it by a lot. So you can do it a lot. Actually, it tends to break the uh, mesh line uh, because it's low resolution. So to fix that, so I'm going to add more points to the circle, the arc part of it or I guess we want to add, no, it already has a bunch. Uh, we want to add more points to the line. So I'm going to say add 50 points. It's going to make it cleaner, more high resolution. And because it's now much longer, because now there's 50 times to offset the line, I'm going to make it much shorter. I oh, know we want to go the other way. There we go. Long story short, we now have this wave texture wrapping around it using the uh, curve tilt, and everything still works, the radius, whatever. Uh, one thing I'm noticing, though, is this spiral is kind of attached onto here. So as I increase this, it's almost like it's sticking onto it. If that's what you want, that's what you want, but I want this to update procedurally. So I'm thinking this sh multiplication should also be a function of how long the curve is, right? If I make this thing longer, there should be more spirals because there's more material to go along. Um, so I'm going to make it a function of the length. And I, we, we just want not length of, as a parameter, but length as just like a number, uh, curve length. So this is just some number. So give me the mesh to curve as the curve. Make this multiplication a function of the length. And there we go. So let's see what this looks like. As I increase this, you can see we're getting more and more spirals. It's kind of subtle what's happening here, uh, but if you get it, you get it. And it also works with all this. And you can make these group inputs, whatever. Uh, just to finish off the material, I'm going to, first of all, make it kind of a greater than 0.5, so it's not this soft gradient, but it's harsh. We can turn down the number of stripes right here. By the way, if you're thinking, what is this thing going on? Uh, this is an artifact of the uh, texture coordinate system we used. And a way to fix it, I think, is to make this, not the mesh line, but to make the circle that we're sweeping along it higher and higher resolution. So you can see, as I change this, it kind of changes the gap. And you can make this like infinitesimally small uh, for render, but whatever. 
not a big deal. You can also rotate it to hide it, hide the seam, because this is a kind of thing that would have a, a seam naturally. Um, okay, color. It should be red. So I'm going to connect this to the base color, not to the, to the base color. I want this black and white map, and now you can see it's a bit shiny since it's using BSDF. I want this map to be a function of a color I pick. I keep saying everything's a function of something else. Either way, uh, one color is going to be white, another color is going to be red, or you can make it green, whatever. This is a way to uh, take the black and white and mix it to two colors that we choose. So you could actually choose like Christmassy colors or whatever. Uh, to make this look good, I'm going to do a couple things. First of all, I'm going to change to cycles and use an HDRI since we're going to have this be a shiny reflective object. So HDRI, use an indoor one, and let's hide that. Um, second of all, we need to make it shiny. Roughness zero, make it shiny. Clear coat one, make it shiny. And now you can see this thing super reflective. And really the rest of this is just like setting up group inputs and stuff like that uh, for these parameters. But like, look at that. We have a radius we can control. So you can kind of control the shape of the candy cane, the length of the candy cane. You just don't want to go to a positive number. Otherwise that happens. Um, and additionally, uh, if you wanted to know how I did that trim thing, just so you know, we can trim the curve here after the tilt and that will do this kind of effect. Uh, but there you go, that is a candy cane. And as always, at the end of these tutorials, good to be back, um, I like to pimp the ever, I'm just shove Patreon right down your Gulliver. Um, there's a link in the description if you want to join the Patreon. Uh, there are three reasons you might want to join. One, you get um, exclusive um, the, the, the blend files, right? So you don't need to make this yourself. You can just get the blend file. You don't need to get it on Blender Market, wherever else I sell it. Uh, you can just get it for your patronage. Another is you get early access to tutorials. You could have seen this a day early. And thirdly, um, exclusive tutorials that I make every once in a while. That's just a bonus tutorial not accessible to everybody. I try to make Patreon as valuable as possible for people, uh, but it doesn't sacrifice the freeness of this uh, YouTube stuff. So uh, if you support what I do or you want to support what I do, just click the link in the description. Even a dollar is super useful. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully this microphone was good. I didn't want to do that thing in the beginning of the video where I'm like, oh, the new microphone, how does it sound? You know, who cares? Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one.